Good morning. It's great to be here with everyone. Like Karen said, we're going to talk about increasing our funnel visibility and driving more RI with Facebook offline conversions. And if that doesn't make any sense, hopefully by the end of this session, it'll make a lot of sense and you feel confident about using offline conversions um, as a critical part of your strategy for any kind of Facebook advertising, no matter what kind of nonprofit you are. So if you missed the intro in the beginning from Karen, we are Community Boost. We are a purpose-driven digital marketing agency on a mission to empower social ventures, um, changing the world. Last year, our team worked with 345 nonprofits and raised over $14 million. And we've worked with small organizations all the way up to some of the biggest, um, scaling through multiple channels, including Facebook and Instagram advertising. So this is me. I'm an associate digital specialist here on the Facebook team, and I come from the nonprofit world. I helped run a small nonprofit for many years, so I'm very familiar with all the different hats you're all wearing and how intimidating this can be. And my job and our role here is to hopefully alleviate some of that stress and confusion and really make this as um, understandable as possible to help you feel empowered, give you some tools to um, better understand this digital marketing world, and then hopefully free you up to do the incredible work you're doing out in the world. So today we're going to cover what are our biggest challenges with conversion tracking and reporting caused by some of the recent iOS updates. We're going to talk about offline conversions, what are they, and the benefit of utilizing them, um, some case study examples, and what offline data is needed and how to upload it. So before we get into kind of the nitty gritty of this, we want to take a pulse check of if you're already using offline conversion tracking for your Facebook ads. So you'll see a poll pop up and you can put your vote there for yes, you're using conversion tracking and seeing the value. Um, yes, but you don't see the value. No, but I want to get it set up um, and I'm not running Facebook ads. So it looks like most of you are not familiar with offline conversion tracking or aren't using it and would like to get it set up. So that's great. So hopefully this will be really informative for everyone. So what are the challenges we're facing with some of these? Oops, sorry. We're still on the bowl. <laughs> awesome. Still getting some votes in, which is great. So it looks like a few of you are doing conversion tracking, but most of you are not. So even if you are, I think this is a good refresher and hopefully you'll get something out of this. So what are the challenges we're facing? Um, some of you may be familiar with these, some may be new. Um, recently, as in last year, Apple, in an effort to strengthen user privacy um, and inform data use, they launched some changes with iOS 14 devices and others moving forward. So this update requires that all apps provide a prompt to iOS 14 users if they're doing any kind of tracking activity and prohibits certain data collection and sharing unless people are opting into being tracked. So obviously a lot of people are naturally opting out of this tracking, which means that there's significantly less data being tracked on Facebook. And so many orgs have seen a drop in their conversions and higher CPAs and lower return on their ad spends. So the top three challenges that we've seen um, with these iOS updates on Facebook and Instagram has been number one, reporting. So it dropped from 28 day click and view attribution to now seven day click, one day view or one day click, seven day view in some cases. Um, and due to this limited tracking and reporting, measuring the success of campaign has become really challenging and knowing what's actually working, which ads are actually converting if you can't see that data. The second is targeting. So less data being collected means that audience sizes are smaller. It can lead to higher frequency and less accurate retargeting. And third is the optimizations was connected to that. So now with these updates, conversion data reporting is delayed, can be delayed up to three days. So that really affects when you're going and you're trying to optimize your campaign and trying to see what's working, what's not. The algorithm isn't having as much data to work with. So you'll often see a lot of the campaigns stuck in the learning phase which means more spend, higher CPAs, and lower return on ad spend, um, which is a big challenge. So, And we also are limited to just tracking eight events in our funnel now. So given all this, how do we know if we're accurately tracking our data and our Facebook conversion campaigns, what's actually working, what's actually converting? And this is where offline conversions come in and can really help. So offline conversions give us the ability to upload donation or purchase data to Facebook and match those transactions that are taking place offline or outside that window with people who have seen or clicked on the Facebook ads. So if there's a match between the list you're uploading and that someone took that action, Facebook will attribute the purchase to your ad. So the benefits of this are a performance breakdown 
you can actually see the demographic based on your results. So with these new iOS changes, you can't see breakdowns of age, gender, location, or platform, but when you upload these offline conversion lists, you can. So that's really helpful when you're looking at um, you know, the audiences that you're speaking to, what's resonating with them. And you can see, you know, are ads coming in on Facebook, you know, feed, or is it coming through their stories? Is it Instagram stories? All really, really helpful information. You can optimize and scale your best performing ads by actually identifying where those conversions are occurring. Um, you can actually accurately optimize your ads and ad sets to increase your conversions and drive better results. And the data from these offline conversions is helping us see what impact our ads are actually having, what's working, what's not, and allowing us to more effectively speak to our audiences and scale our campaigns. So this is a great example. I think it's helpful to actually see what these offline conversions like are doing in real life and the power they have to transform the results of our campaign. So this is one of our partners, Paws, and they've been at the forefront of efforts to rescue and provide sanctuary for animals who have been the victims of exotic and performing animal trades. You can see here, this is one of their big donation campaigns. Um, you can see their ad spend and about 1200 in website donation revenue came through about 14 website donations. But then you can see that we had about 36 in offline donation revenue and 56 additional offline donations. So that was because we uploaded the list and got to see that those actually were matched to our campaign. Otherwise, you're just thinking this campaign only brought in 14 donations and only 1200, you know, 1227 in donation revenue when in actuality it had 70 donations and a 12.34 X return on ad spend. So that's a 25% increase in total donation revenue for offline conversions and a 20% increase in total donations. They're pretty drastic results when you look at with and without offline conversions. And our second was from Children's Musical Theater San Jose. So they are a nationally acclaimed theater organization and one of the oldest performing arts uh, organizations in San Jose, inspiring and training youth in musical theater and in community service. So they did a ticket sale campaign for the show and we had about 12,013 website purchase revenue, 119 website purchases, but then we uploaded offline lists and we had an additional 151 ticket purchases. So we actually had a 21.18x return on ad spend. So 56% of our purchases actually came from offline conversions from this campaign, a 27% increase in total purchases. So this was really cru crucial. And when we were looking at the campaign, what actually creative was working, um, what ads were bringing in results. And we could then tweak the strategy, tweak our copy, know what was actually speaking to the audiences, what was actually driving the ticket sales the most. So for those of you that love um, Excel, you're gonna love this part. If you don't, that's okay. Um, it's a little tricky to get at first, but as long as you get the formatting down and upload a few times, it's gonna be a much smoother process. So we're gonna walk through kind of how you actually upload these conversions in platform. So first thing you want to do is create an offline event set. So this is critical because Facebook will not attribute any of the conversion data before that is created. So you might already have one created, but if not, double check in your in your ads manager and make sure that this is um, in there. So you go to the business settings, data sources, create your offline event set. You can also just go to your events manager and do this. Um, you can name it and set it to auto tracking and you'll be good to go. So pretty simple there, it takes just a few minutes to set up. And then the big part is formatting customer data. So to, Facebook actually does provide a template, which is great because um, it's pretty particular of how they want things formatted. When you upload, it has to be a CSV file and things like first name, last name, event name, event time have to be in a particular way. Um, an event name, for example, is not actually your campaign name or um, your, like whatever your event name was, it's actually the conversion event that you're doing in Facebook. So it's going to be donate, purchase, subscribe, whatever conversion event with value that you're using in your campaign. That's what that means. Um, and then it has a 90 day window. So you're going to want to upload anything before 90 days when you're uploading is not going to be attributed. So you want to make sure that, um, those conversions have happened within the last 90 days when you go to upload. Um, if you don't upload anything in that 90 day window, it shrinks back down to 35 days. And then um, if you upload something, it goes back to 90. So they're just trying to encourage you to upload data regularly. So we have 
partners that upload once a week, once a month, couple, every couple of days. So it really depends on what works best for you and your organization. But we recommend as regularly as possible, just so you can get the most accurate data and results from your campaign. So we've up, we've created our offline event list, we formatted our customer data file, and now we can upload that file into Events Manager. So under that offline event set, we go to Upload Events, and you can then match the data and review your estimated match rate, your accepted rows, any errors, and we can take a look at what that actually looks like on the next slide. So this is what it looks like when you, before you upload it, the final upload, but you upload just to match it, you'll get this picture of how many rows are accepted, how many estimated match, if you have any major errors or warnings. Um, and that's really helpful because then you can actually hit that back button and kind of go make some edits. If this is your first time uploading, um, you're probably going to hit this a, a lot and probably have a low estimated match rate or a high error rate just because it is pretty particular. Um, so I just encourage you, don't get frustrated. You will get it. And once you get it, it's really nice and great. And you'll you'll get used to it. But um, you sometimes will have to go all the way back and you know re-download your CSV file in the correct format and then re-upload it um, to actually see a higher match rate and see less errors. So common errors are like they don't like commas in your purchase value or donation value, dollar signs. The phone number area code has to be in a particular um, format. Timestamps, obviously you wanna have your day, month, year, but if you can have the time stamp of you know when that actual transaction occurred, that's even better down to the minutes and seconds because that gives Facebook even more information to go off of, to go and match. And then you want your event name, which needs to be written out exactly like it is in platform. So whether that's donate, purchase, if it's a custom conversion, you want to make sure that it's written exactly as that custom conversion is in the campaign. And then it takes about 15 minutes to populate and see results. So it's, it takes seconds to upload, which is nice, but it does take a little bit of time for it to match. So you can go back into your event history and see that your list um, got uploaded and then just come check back in about 15 minutes or so, depending on how large your list was to see if that's actually matched with any offline purchases. And you can go into your ads manager and view your offline results. You can um, select when you go into your columns, you can actually select the boxes that say total purchase, total donations, and that'll pop up with your offline purchases as well, um, which is really helpful to see when you're viewing an events manager. So that's what it looks like when you customize your columns, you can actually drag and drop and move them around, which is really nice. So they don't always populate in this order, but I think it's a helpful view to see them side by side. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we have our website purchases. And then in the orange box is our offline list that we uploaded. So if we were just looking at our website purchases, we would have said this brought in 12 purchases when we actually had an additional 258 that came in. So that's a really significant difference. And you can even see third way down that it looks like no purchases came through in that ad. But in reality, we actually had 78 purchases come through. Um, and then you can see on the far right hand side, that's the conversion value of those purchases. And the middle column is the purchase conversion value. And that is the combination of both the website and offline. So you can see total what Facebook is tracking and then what your offline list is tracking and get the actual representation of your revenue, um, what your CPR is and what your actual return on ad spend is as well. And I see, yeah, purchases is also done. It depends on what you've set up in your backend as your standard events. So some accounts purchases equal donations, but some use the word donate for their standard event as their donation. So either way, so it depends on what you used for your conversion campaign, whether it's going to say website purchases or website donations. So like I said earlier, a great thing is you can actually see your demographics with traditional tracking because of these iOS updates. We can't see the breakdown demographics, but when you upload these lists, you can, which is really helpful to see, you know, if your ads are using, if your ads are resonating with certain particular audiences and regions where they're at, you can see by state, you can see by placement, you can see what device, if they're on mobile, if they're on desktop, super helpful when you're crafting campaign strategy, when you're creating certain creative, you know, if you're having a majority of your ads resonate on Instagram stories with females 44 to 50, 45 to 54, per se, you could craft specific create, creative just for that audience and copy really targeting them, really speaking to them, um, since you know that they're doing 
best in your campaigns like this. So really helpful to see these demographic breakdowns and contribute to a more targeted intentional campaign strategy and actually see what results your campaigns are bringing in. So I hope that was helpful. I know there's a lot of information and maybe brand new for a lot of you, but if you do have any questions, we're going to jump into the Q&A here in a bit so you can put um, your questions in the Q&A pane up above, I believe in your chat. And um, if you're interested in Community Boost Services, I would highly recommend um, booking a session, a free Facebook ad report card. Our team is incredible. They can answer so many questions in depth with you and see if um, you'd love to work with us. So you can scan that QR code, do the link. We're also going to do another poll. So if you're interested in exploring um, helping us, it, us working with you to help scale your revenue with offline conversion tracking for Facebook ads, you can go and vote in that poll now. Um, and again, we're going to do a Q&A here in a bit so you can answer that poll. And then we're going to jump into the Q&A. Hopefully you guys can see that pop up. All right. That was awesome, Lauren. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hope that was helpful for everyone. Definitely. I mean, for me, it's like the language. Um, it, it was very helpful. It was great. Um, and so there's a lot of questions in the chat. Um, the first one's from Annie. It says, what is the minimum donor information that needs to be provided for Facebook to match offline conversions? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say the most critical is their email, their first name, last name, um, the donation value, the event time. I think those are the most critical. Yeah, and the event name of what your event. So if you can kind of give that bare minimum, at least their contact information. If you can add city state, that's great. I think that gives Facebook that much more. So as much information as you can give. But we've definitely uploaded lists where it's really just first name, last name, value, and email, and the date of the transaction, and it's been able to match it. Okay, awesome. Perfect. So the next question is from Jennifer. She wants to know what percentage, what percent of the data in an upload tends to match even for custom audiences? I'm always curious. Yeah, it really varies. Um, I would say we get pretty good. Once you get the formatting down, your match rate percentage goes way up. So I would say we see between you know, 65 to 95% match rate is literally what you want to see. And it's pretty good about matching it. Um, sometimes you'll have a lower, and again, it's Facebook estimating it, so it's not going to be an exact match rate. Um, but I would say it, as long as you're giving Facebook accurate information in the format that's asking, it does a pretty good job of um, matching that in platform and gives you a pretty high percentage rate. Awesome. And another question from Jennifer, she asks, what... Um, would they be double counted? For example, would you add website purchases to offline conversions to get total purchases or would that be double counting people? Yeah, that's a great question. So they have an automatic deduplication software built into Facebook. And so we, it does a really good job of separating those purchases. Again, this is why it's really important to upload the data regularly um, and not overlap it because then you get the higher chance of possible mistakes because of course there's always some glitches and bugs that happen that's just natural in platforms like this but um, they built that in specifically so that when you're looking at offline purchases and website purchases those are two separate transactions that have taken place and you can see that in the conversion value a lot of times you can see that the conversion value is different um, or the time it came in is different um, so you can double check and make sure that those are different transactions. Um, but yeah, so when you see in your customized columns, when it says like, say website purchases and then offline purchases, those are two separate. So when you're counting them together, you're not double counting. You're actually getting the full total of your purchases that have come through. Awesome. Helpful. If you don't want to do that math by yourself. You can actually just select the purchases column and it'll combine it for you, which is helpful. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. 
And Ruth wants to know what is the difference in using the offline conversions as compared to UTM tracking of the specific ads? So yeah, I mean, UTM tracking is not my specific forte, but my understanding is that, you know, with offline conversions, um, you're just being able to pinpoint more accurately in platform what ads are being attributed or what conversions are being attributed to your ads. Um, so I think Jelena's in the chat here. She has more experience with UTM tracking and probably answer this a little bit better. Um, but my understanding is that that is giving us the most accurate representation and platform of what's happening offline and being able to report those results. Okay, awesome. And Laura asked to confirm the list is the offline event set and that information is gathered after an action is taken, like a donation. Let me just read that. The, the list is the offline event set. Yeah, to confirm the list is the offline event set and that information is gathered after an action is taken. Yeah, is that so like they, a donation? Yeah, so the event set is its own thing where it's capturing all that information. So the lists are getting uploaded into the offline event set and that's where you're gonna see all that data populate. So you can have one offline event set for all of your conversion campaigns and they can all be in that one event set. So you're gonna see all the, whether it's purchase, donation, subscribe, anything with value that you've put there, it's gonna, in a conversion campaign, it's going to attribute that action in the offline event set if you've uploaded it there. If that makes sense, hopefully that clarifies. For sure. Um, and Zachary wants to know, how accurate is Facebook to matching these offline donations? Yeah, I mean, we've seen it be, we've checked with our partners and our accounts to make sure that, hey, the, are these offline purchases, are you seeing them on your end as well to make sure that they're actually tracking? And we've seen them be highly accurate. So um, it's really an incredible asset to add into your campaigns to really see what's working. Um, because for, you know, a lot of this lack of data, we're kind of going in blind. And so now with these offline conversions, we've really been able to see much, much better results with our campaigns now that we can actually see what ads are converting, what audiences are resonating with, um, and then make those optimizations and strategies around that with our campaigns. So I would say give it a go because it's really accurate. We've only seen, I feel like minor issues with um, offline purchases not coming through. And usually that's upload error more than anything because it just is very finicky with the formatting. Um, we've even uploaded, a, you know, lists a couple times with different formats. And then finally we start to see results and we know those results are true because we've checked with the client. So yeah, I would say on a scale, it's like eight to 10 accuracy, <laughs> I think. For sure. Well, that's really, really, really good to know. And Laura wants to know what role does the Facebook pixel play in this? We, we talked a lot about the pixel in the earlier two sessions and just like how to set up and what it's doing. So yeah, Laura wants to know what role does the pixel play? Yeah. I mean, the pixel still plays a big role. I feel like it's still doing the tracking that we know and love, but it's just, it's very, it's more limited with blocking from cookies and third-party apps and all these different things that the updates have rolled out. And so this is just the convert offline conversions are a tool along with a pixel in your toolbox to just kind of fill in those missing gaps. So, you know, if you're seeing that the pixel was tracking a lot more than it is now, chances are offline conversions will help you kind of fill in those gaps and see where it might be missing some things, but the pixel still does a great job of picking up a lot of tracking, but it's limited with these updates. Awesome. Well, um, it looks like that's all the questions in the Q and A, but does anybody else have anything that maybe they're confused about? Um, maybe they're, you know, struggling with one of these things. Um, we have a couple more minutes and, you know, we're here to answer all of your questions. Oh, looks like we got one. David wants to know, do any of your nonprofit clients have concerns with privacy, sharing this personal donor data with Facebook and how have they addressed this? A good question. Yes, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so some clients have opted to upload the data themselves to save a step from like sending it to us or sending it to anyone else to upload. So they want to make sure that that is only in the hands of, you know, their employees, which is a great way to make sure that things stay private safe. We have privacy policies in place, obviously for that. Um, Facebook has their whole privacy policies 
um, listed out on their website and they're very clear that they do not sell this data, that it stays in the same way as if you're uploading like a customer list for custom audiences um, to match. So they're not using this in any other way, shape or form on the platform. Obviously people have their own reservations and hesitancies with Facebook. So I think just being able to be transparent with your donors and um, you know, whoever you're uploading data for um, just to make sure that everyone's comfortable with that. But yeah, Facebook, you know, assures us that they are leaving everything pretty much alone. It's just matching that transaction data for the campaigns and nothing more. Perfect. And we've got um, one from Lisa. She says, I'm confused about everything. Can you define conversion once more? Yeah. So a conversion is the actions that people are taking on your ads for a specific, so like say a donation campaign, or a ticket sale campaign, um, purchase campaign, the conversion is the action that they're taking from your ad on your website, wherever you're sending them, they've made the purchase, they've signed up for the email list, they've become a monthly donor, whatever that action, um, that's a conversion. So you're converting what you're wanting them to do in your ad on the platform.